You know, there's more pancake varieties than just about anything on the planet. So I thought, let's just condense this down to the two very best in the breakfast category. So like I said before, we're gonna talk about two of the best pancakes. That being the all-American pancake that we all know and love. Fluffy, you get them piled and stacked as high as the eye can see. And then the fluffy souffle Japanese pancakes that we've all seen on the internet. They've taken the internet by storm. And I thought, you know what? Let's make this very simple. We're gonna make both of them. We're gonna make the fluffiest, easiest version of the all-American. And then we're gonna make a classic Japanese souffle one. Then we're gonna decide not only which is better, but if it's even worth it to make the souffle. So with all that said, let's do this, shall we? So aside from the fact that we're going to be ignoring crepes in this video, please do yourself a favor and buy the best maple syrup that money can buy, or well, as far as your dollar can stretch, that is. Now, if you want to take it a step further, you could smoke your maple syrup, and no, I'm not talking about the kind that would send you to the hospital. I'm talking pour your maple syrup into a bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and then attach a smoke gun. This is the Breville version. I'll have a link in the description. No, this is not sponsored. I just happen to use it. I filled this one up with hickory smoke, pulled its dangly thing out, and bing, bang, boom, you have the sweet nectar of the tree gods that also tastes like a campfire. So for our first pancake, we'll make a traditional all-American flapjack. Look, this is really easy. In a small bowl, whisk together one egg and one and a half cups, or 386 grams of whole milk. Once those are thoroughly combined, in a separate bowl, add in two cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup or 62 grams of granulated sugar, one teaspoon or four grams of fine sea salt, a quarter teaspoon or one gram of baking soda, and one tablespoon or 12 grams of baking powder. Give that some whiskey business. By the way, I still don't know why you guys get so stressed if I don't say whiskey business. I mean, it's, I don't know. Anyway, once that's combined, mix your flour mix with the milky egg stuff. And as you're mixing that together, whisk in two tablespoons or 21 grams of melted unsalted butter and continue whisking until everything is combined and smooth. It's okay if there's a couple lumps here and there. Now let that batter rest for about five minutes, then preheat yourself a nonstick skillet over medium heat, hit it with some spray oil and or a couple tablespoons of unsalted butter. And once that pan is nice and hot, spoon in quarter cup dollops of your batter, I would say like three to four are good for a 10 inch skillet and cook for two to three minutes or until golden brown on the bottom. I usually go by firmness rather than bubbles showing up at the top of my pancake. Oftentimes that tends to lead to, you know, overcooking. But I'll judge your dry ass pancakes respectfully. Now flip your pancakes and cook an additional one to three minutes or till beautiful golden brown and bouncy, but not overly firm. Place those lovelies on the side and repeat with the rest of your batter. And would you look at that? Those look like some flipping pancakes or flapjacks or whatever you want to call them. Doesn't matter to me. Now, obviously you'll top that with butter, drizzle it with some maple syrup or smoked maple syrup if you're truly a culinary hype beast like me, and enjoy. But before we do that, let's talk about our competitor here, the Japanese pancake. These are really easy to mess up, so please pay extra special attention here. Papa's watching. Start off with two whole eggs, crack those bad boys and separate them out into two medium bowls, one for the yolks and one with the whites. To the two yolks, you're gonna add one tablespoon or 14 grams of whole milk, one teaspoon or three grams of vanilla extract, whisk all that together until completely smooth. Then you'll sift in a quarter cup or 30 grams of cake flour, three quarters of a teaspoon or three grams of baking powder and half a teaspoon or one gram of fine sea salt. Make sure to sift that out nicely and whisk all that together till thoroughly combined and place to the side. Separately, begin beating your egg whites with electric beaters, and once they reach a soft peak, begin slowly adding two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of granulated sugar, a little bit at a time until all of it is added. Keep on whipping until you get nice, stiff peaks. Be careful not to overbeat this. You want it to be nice and glossy like this, not a separated, chonky mess. Now fold in a quarter of your meringue into the yolk mixture till thoroughly incorporated, then the next fourth, and fold again till uh, incorporated, and repeat two more times until all of your meringue is added and you have a lovely fluffy mixture like this. Don't you beat out that air. Okay, that sounds weird. Carefully transfer that mixture to a piping bag with a round tip attachment or just a plastic bag with the corner cut out. And heat yourself a nonstick medium skillet over low heat until nice and hot. Spray that with some cooking oil and wipe off the excess. Now pipe two evenly sized mounds only using half of your mixture to do so. Pipe those evenly, otherwise they'll cave in and I'll have to come in and yell at you for a little bit. Some people like that, so I don't know, maybe you do it on purpose. Splash in a spoonful of water in the blank areas of the pan, immediately cover with a lid and let that steam and cook for five minutes. Then lift the lid and 
and you'll notice it might have spread a little, that's okay. Pipe another large mound that is evenly shaped onto both of your pancakes. Add another spoonful of water, cover and cook for an additional three to four minutes. Take the lid off and now your moment of truth. You're gonna flip these, but wait, the trick to flipping this is not a traditional one. You have to sort of coax it into rolling over onto the other side like this. You have delicate BB souffles here. Keep daddy's fingies nice and relaxed when you do this. Now add another spoonful of water, cover with the lid and cook for three to four more minutes. You may have to adjust time a little bit. Overcooking or undercooking will mean a totally sunken souffle, and that's depressing. Now finally, take your pancakes out of your pan, plop them onto a plate, but gently. Top with whipped cream, some nice butter, and a generous dusting of powdered sugar. And screw it, maybe some more smoked maple syrup too, for the flex. Let's taste test and see who the real winner is. Okay, so we have two pancakes that are relatively, well, simple. None of that sort of like Nutella stuffed cookie butter pounded, they're pancakes. For a normal pancake that you just throw together, put in the pan, these are, in my opinion, the perfect pancake. Now, the souffle pancakes, after all that work, really better come through. They're pretty good. I know I'm gonna catch flack for this one, but these souffle pancakes are overrated. They're good, and they have like a nice airiness. They almost like melt in your mouth, which is really cool, but not worth the effort. So, at the end of the day, this is gonna be the only route that you wanna go, unless you wanna spend time trying a new fun project. You wanna have any new fun? Then uh, you might as well just make some regular pancakes and smoke your maple syrup. Do you wanna know what else is plump, fluffy, and covered in sticky stuff? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made Japanese pancakes and we made regular all-American flapjack pancakes, whatever you wanna call them. At the end of the day, I love how simplistic and easy a pancake is. To me, it's something that should be whisked together, tossed in a pan, cooked, flipped, and eaten right then on the spot while it's still hot. The Japanese pancake isn't really that hard, but the thing is timing that cook, right? Everybody's stovetop is so different. It took me five tries to get the pancake to stay tall, and I realized that it has a lot to do with how you cook it. If you overcook it, it's gonna fall down. If you undercook it, it's gonna fall down. You have to cook it perfectly. In the world of like making breakfast for your friends and family, it's just not realistic. It's very cool and they're beautiful and they're fluffy, but let's just stick with a beautiful, perfect pancake recipe that I have delivered to you here. With all that said, Papa love you, and if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. My voice cracked, all right.